Hello and welcome back to another Rightly Witterings with me, Michael Jex, the tea drinking author, who is today drinking a very delightful cup of mint, peppermint infusion, in fact. Thanks to Dave McClure, who sent me this Taylor's Organic Peppermint, which is absolutely delightful. Thanks a lot, Dave. He also sent me a notebook and a couple of pens, which I will be reviewing, although not today. Anyway, today I am here to tell you a little story. Some years ago, I was working at Exeter University for the Royal Literary Fund. Um, they used to pay authors like me. They still do, actually. They pay authors like me to go into universities and give communication advice to students. So, for example, I would take on law students, math students, history students, English students, any discipline whatsoever, and give them advice on how to communicate. Why? Well, because youngsters going straight out of school into university often don't know how to write properly and clearly. I had one girl who was a first year, very bright, lovely girl, um, but she kept getting Ds for her essays, which is not good. She came and spoke to me for an hour. I could see where she was going wrong, basically trying to sound academic rather than trying to explain what she was thinking. And as a result of that meeting with me, the next essays were all A graded. So made a difference. And the Royal Literary Fund had this brilliant idea of just putting authors and poets and others into universities to help people. And it worked. So that was good. The only trouble was that when I went in, I was using my Conway Stewart Churchill, which is a delightful black original Churchill from about the year 2000. And I discovered fairly quickly that it was getting scratched. Now, I was carrying it carefully in my pocket and elsewhere, but it was getting injured and I didn't like that. So I thought I needed to find something different. And what I found was this, a Visconti Homo Sapiens. I love lots of things about this. I love the material it's made of, which is basically lava from an Italian volcano, bonded with rubber or something to make this wonderful tactile smooth surface that, because it is made from lava, is pretty much indestructible. You cannot scratch it. You cannot do anything to it. It's also got these lovely bronze decorative bits which just make it delightful. But what's special about it is, to fill it, you unscrew the end cap, pull it out, dunk it in some ink, and push it home. What happens is there's a piston running up and down a parallel-sided cylinder, but the bottom has a flare. So all the time you're pushing it down, you're pushing it against a vacuum that you're creating at the back. When it hits the flare, the valve at the front, it releases the vacuum and it can suck ink all the way into it. What an elegant, delightful system. I love it. It's absolutely brilliant. In fact, I love it so much that when I started a project where I was going to write a book entirely longhand, I spoke to the designer of these pens, Dante Del Vecchio at Visconti, and he made me this. This is a prototype. It's not perfect. It's been used a lot, so the label has come off the arm there because it was only a prototype. But this pen has done a lot of work for me. And what's special about it is, I don't know if you can see that, there is a clear window here and there's a clear window here. Now, it has the same filling system where you unscrew it, pull it out, push it in, it creates a vacuum and then sucks ink up. Nice and straightforward. But... This is subtly different because this has a little reservoir for ink in the front here and a much bigger reservoir for ink at the back. And the great thing is when you screw it down, it locks off the big one from the small one. So you can, as an example, fill up both reservoirs and write for 10 pages or so just using that small reservoir. 
and then you unscrew this and the ink will flow. Or you can, if you're writing for a long project, unscrew that and just let the ink flow constantly while you write. And that will write for pages and pages and pages and pages because this holds several cc's of ink. And I love this pen. It was a prototype and in fact a little while ago Visconti brought out this model and called it the Skylight which is exactly the same pen. It's got the small reservoir at the front, it's got the larger reservoir at the back and it's an appealing system because not only does it mean you can decide to write for longer periods or shorter periods, it also means you can lock off the front reservoir. So if you're going on a plane, for example, the ink will not burp out. Because when you go on a plane, you go up in the sky, the pressure in the cabin reduces. If there's any air bubble inside the reservoir of your pen that air will expand with the reduced pressure and force inks out, out through the nib and you get burps, which means you get horrible ink stains on your shirts. This is another Conway Stewart Homo, Sapi Homo sapiens. This one is the... Uh, that was the skylight. This is the Crystal Dream, I think. Same principle. It's got the same big reservoir here, same little reservoir there. Same delightful material to write with to hold it's just a wonderful wonderful pen and a fabulous system to use i just adore these viscontis they are superb but recently as you will know i discussed pens with dante del vecchio again and he let me have this this is the Pineda. It's the Avatar Traveller. And I thought it would be worthwhile discussing the difference between this and these. And then coming to a conclusion about which is my favourite. Always interesting to have a phone call when you're halfway through recording. Right, now, let's have a look at... Two of these pens, I'm not going to look at all of them. I'm just going to compare these two for the simple reason that they are the easiest two to, to see what's going on. Here we go. So then, here we have the two pens. First of all, you'll notice that they're not dissimilar sizes. Possibly the Pineda is another half a centimetre longer. I did mention how you fill these pens, so let's just show that in action. First of all, unscrew it. Pull it all the way back. And now I have this delicate style of inkwell called a watercolour paintbrush water holder. So the pen goes in the top. and I'm trying to work out the best way of doing this right now because of my injured hand. So I'm going to do it with this hand and try to turn it so you can see what's going on. So the clear reservoir is there. Let's see if I can... Hmm. Manipulate things so you can see what's going on. So you press the plunger down, then there's a click, and you can see there that the water has filled halfway up. Now, when I was talking to Dante Del Vecchio some years ago, when we were first talking about this type of filling mechanism, he did say, all of these pens, you really need to pump them a couple of times because the seals start to work a bit better. I must admit, I've not found it usually makes that much difference, to be honest. After the first couple of pumps, it's still coming up to there, but it's no further. But there is one trick. Well, it's not a trick. 
But there is one way to get more ink into the pen. This is a Visconti Traveller's inkwell. Now, there's a line here that says, do not overfill this. The reason is that when you are pumping the plunger forward, it's forcing all of that air straight out of the nib. If you have an inkwell like this and you force lots of air into it, you're liable to have an inky accident that gets ink absolutely everywhere. But let me just demonstrate one thing. If you use one of these Traveller's ink wells, you can turn the pen upside down, because you have to, to fill it, and then when you fill the pen you get an absolutely complete fill. Can you see there? There is no air bubble in there at all. It is absolutely full of ink. Well, water in this case. But with that you have an absolutely vast amount of ink. Now one of these will usually give me two penfuls of ink, but with a Visconti um, crystal dream like this no it's just one fill basically because this thing takes so much in it now to me that is a, a supremely elegant filling system it gives you a vast amount of ink And it's quick and easy. So let's have a look at this Pineda. Now the first thing I would say is appearance of the two in comparison. They're very different. The Visconti is a great deal fatter. Just move my microphone a bit. The Visconti is fatter. It feels larger in the hand. I like the fact it's got this subtle little flaring at the bottom of the section so your fingers are less likely to slide off. And it is heavier, but although it's heavy it doesn't feel it. It's one of those strange pens, rather like my Conway Stewart Drake. Now this thing is massive. It's, I forget now, but it's a significant weight it's something like 50 grams in the hand but it doesn't actually feel heavy when you're using it because it's so well balanced and it feels just right the Pineda is a great deal lighter and I would always have said I preferred a heavier pen until I've had recently this operation on my hand which has been very successful from the look of it, and my fingers are all coming back before anybody asks. But it's definitely had an impact, and I find that this now is one of the most comfortable pens I use, and I use it very regularly. Looking at the styling very quickly, both of them have really good mechanical clips that will hold the pen to you. I love the Visconti, simple twist. Uh, I would call it a bayonet fit. There are five little lugs inside the lid and they fit into, let's just move this up here, five slots which are angled as you can see. So the cap goes on the pen, you push it in against a spring, twist it very slightly and it's locked. It is just a simple, superb delight to use. On the other hand, this has one of my favourite mechanisms. It's just a magnet. <laughs> it's so easy, it's so delightful. I just adore that. When it comes to filling the pen, it has the same sort of arrangement, except there's no screw to unscrew. There's just a quick turn because this is a bayonet fit, like the cap on the Visconti. And then 
in the same way as the Visconti, you pull the plunger up, stick it vertically, I'm going to have to move hands again, vertically into your pot of water or ink, and I'm just going to push it down the once. And I don't know if you can see, but that has almost filled the pen completely already. If you want to really get it full, you can, of course, use a travelling inkwell. This is the Pineda version of the travelling inkwell, which it has to be said is significantly more cost effective because this is only some, well, I think it was 20 odd quid when I got this one. Let's just do the same thing as we did with the Visconti. Turn it upside down. Oh, it's not quite as effective there. There we go. And you've got an absolutely full ink capacity there again. Just loosen off that so I can retrieve my pen. It's very odd losing all strength in your fingers. So, both filling, me both filling mechanisms work superbly well. And I do love this approach to filling a pen because it's simple and I think very elegant. And it does give you an absolutely vast amount of ink. So the next thing is, how much ink does it actually give you? I'm going to get a measuring thing. Now I must apologise here because I am only going to be using a little medicine measuring thing because I haven't got anything better. So, first of all, we have this nice full Visconti Homo Sapiens Crystal Dream. Unscrew it. Pull the plunger right out. Turn it back over and squirt out the ink. There we go. There's a little bit left in there, so I'm just going to do that again. Now, that tells me that it is just below five mils of water in there. So if I just about four mils, I think, of ink to fill the entire pen. Let's put it into perspective. The average pen, when you're using it, will not have one cc, one mil, of ink in it. Let's have a look at the Pineda. Out with the thing. Uh, this one's not so easy because it's got the longer shaft once and and a second time. And this has, yep, exactly the same. It's about four cc's, I'd say. So, the two pens. What are the differences? What are the sensible comparisons? First of all, obviously, you've got looks. I do love the Visconti looks. I love this material, which is just wonderful. It's very robust. I've never managed to scratch any of my Viscontis, and they have been used very regularly. However, if you look on the internet, I think it's with Goulet pens, you'll see Dante Del Vecchio whacking one of these with a hammer and it does not break or shatter or show any sort of sign of damage. I don't know what kind of resin or plastic this is, but Pineda have got hold of something that's really extraordinary. It looks plasticky, admittedly, but 
I have to admit, the looks have really grown on me enormously. I like the detailing around the cat band, which is sort of a cityscape of Firenze, of Florence. You've got the Duomo, you've got various other aspects, you've got the bridge. It's just nice. I love the fact that it's just a simple magnet. The clip is really effective. I like the slimness because it works much better with my hand now. And I also love the locking system, the bayonet lock at the back. So you just twist it once, pull it out, push it back in, and you've got a full, completely full fountain pen. And like the Visconti, there is a small reservoir at the front, there is a huge reservoir at the back, so you can write with it for short bursts. And if you need more ink, just turn the cap briefly, and there you can go with the whole reservoir to write. I love the nib on this. It is a flex nib designed by Dante Del Vecchio himself. It's gold. I don't know what carrot, I don't really care. It feels beautifully smooth and it gives me a wonderful amount of flexibility, which means superb writing. The Viscontis are semi-flex if you're gentle with it, but it doesn't give you the same line variation by any stretch of the imagination. I love all my Viscontis. Out of all of them, possibly the two I really like the most are my original one, with no windows, you can never tell how much ink you've got in it, but it's lovely. It feels good in the hand. It's just smooth and delightful. I do love the Crystal Dream because if I'm going away to do anything, I can see how much ink I've got. And it does hold significantly more than the standard old Homo sapiens, the Bronze Age. And it won't burp. This one will burp on an aeroplane. So, I am very, very fond of my Viscontis. I love them, which is why I've got four of them. But I have to admit, the pen that's with me every single day, just now, is the Pineda. It has a nib, which is the equal of my Conway Stewart Drake, which is stunning. I love this. I love this pen. But it's too big, it's too heavy to carry around all day every day. This, on the other hand, is a pen I can fill once in a week and it will keep going all week, even with a lot of writing. It's just superb. It's quick and easy to fill. It has that lovely magnetic cap. It has a huge capacity. So I think for now, out of the two, out of all of the Viscontis, that is, the Pineda is the clear winner for me. What a bombshell. I hope that was interesting. I do hope that uh, my slight crippledness with this bally hand isn't too distracting, but uh, it does mean that I'm stuck rather doing little presentations from here. Next week, hopefully, I'm going to have physio on Tuesday, and with luck, that should mean I'll be able to go back to the standing desk and do a bit more with my slightly better camera recording videos up there. This is currently recording just on my iPad. Anyway, hope that was interesting. Thanks a lot for watching. Do please let me know if you've got any questions, any comments. Put them all down the bottom. If you'd like to like this, then um, you can also subscribe and hit the bell button. And don't forget to tell your friends about it. And if you want to support the channel, you can go to the Patreon link at the bottom. Or you can buy me a coffee down below, which can also result in a cup of tea. Even mint tea, if you like. It really is nice, Dave. Thanks a lot. And apart from that, I'll see you in a week's time when I know what's happening with my hand. Hopefully. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers. Take care. Bye.